Welcome to Fiction Narratives. Chapter 21, Umbu. In the office of Kanaha's third hokage, several people were lost in their thoughts. One of them, dressed in white with the words third hokage, was a short elderly man with white hair. Smoke drifted from his pipe as he gazed at the sky. Hokage Sama, are you sure about this? asked an Umbu hunter, wearing a boar mask, indicating his captain rank with his white attire. We have no choice, replied Hiruzen, exhaling smoke from his pipe, feeling quite vulnerable himself. But Hokage Sama, we can always threaten him, he has. That won't work. Hiruzen interrupted the Umbu hunter, sighing at the suggestion. The kid has us cornered any wrong move, and Kanaha will fall. Hiruzen looked at his hunters, unable to see through their masks but sensing their helpless gazes. He, too, felt defenseless, experiencing the unsettling feeling of being manipulated for the first time. It was something he disliked, but accepting the request seemed to be their only option. Knock, knock. After a moment of silence, someone knocked on the door. Come in, Hiruzen said without turning around. Hokage Sama, Tsunade Sama has arrived, announced a woman in her mid 20s, visibly a jonin with her special attire. Upon hearing this, Hiruzen's expression turned serious, and the Umbu hunters also adjusted their demeanor under their masks. Let her in. Yes, Hokage Sama. Minutes later, a beautiful woman with brown eyes and long blonde hair entered. She had a violet diamond shaped mark on her forehead, but what stood out the most were her large breasts. Now, what did the brat do Tsunade asked, getting straight to the point. She didn't want to waste time on this, as it was always the same routine, a lecture about the kid, a warning, and then she was free to go. She was getting tired of it. It's better if you take a seat, Tsunade, Hiruzen said, pointing to an empty chair from his main seat. No, I don't want to waste time on this, old man. Just tell me what the brat did, and I'll punish him accordingly. Here is inside, it was becoming a routine. Tsunade uttered the same words every time, and the kid always managed to evade consequences. Obviously, Tsunade hadn't harmed him. Little did Hiruzen know, Tsunade had tried many times to discipline the kid, but Yuki was a master at escaping, leaving Tsunade frustrated. Now she understood how powerless those who played with him were. Tsunade had a headache, she was called two to three times a week. It was becoming more of a routine, but it couldn't be avoided. After all, she was his guardian. It's true that I called you about the kid, but this time, it's nothing bad. A bit surprised, Tsunade raised her eyebrows. What do you mean, old man? This time, I want to recruit the kid to be an umbu hunter, Hiruzen calmly responded, blowing smoke from his pipe. Tsunade frowned at this, she quickly glanced at the three umbu hunters in the office, one of them being a captain, she hadn't paid much attention to them before, but now. Why what does this mean Tsunade said with a deep voice, unable to hide her frustration. Click, click. The Umbu hunters quickly grabbed their weapons, blinking as they surrounded Tsunade with their weapons. Tsunade remained calm, she completely ignored them, just continued looking at her master. Enough. Yes, Hokage sama A bit bewildered, the Umbu hunters put away their weapons, returning to their original positions. Hiruzen blew more smoke from his pipe. I hope you calm down, Tsunade. How do you expect me to calm down, old man you're trying to recruit my godson? Indeed, this is why Tsunade was summoned by the Hokage, to handle Yuki's messes. More than a year ago, Tsunade adopted him as her godson, making her responsible for his actions. Hiruzen didn't care much when he learned about the adoption, but later, with Tsunade behind him, the kid made his life more difficult. Don't take it the wrong way, Tsunade. I recognize the kid's talent, it's a waste for him to remain in the academy. This isn't the issue. Why do you want to recruit him? Slightly sighing, Hiruzen closed his eyes. After a few seconds, he opened them again. This is a punishment. The kid has committed many offenses, and it's fair that we punish him. But don't worry, he'll have a high rank. The kid's skills are exceptional, you've trained him yourself, so don't worry. Tsunade was surprised by this. She looked into her master's eyes for a while before recalling the events of this morning. Hey, big sister Tsunade. 
Tell me, little Yuki. Do you think I could join the Umbu Hunters? Did he ask you? Tsunade asked. Hiruzen remained silent in response to her question. TCH. Tsunade clicked her tongue in frustration. She had already obtained her answer in that silence. What are you planning, brat? With irritation, Tsunade decided that she needed to extract the truth from Yuki. Without saying goodbye, Tsunade left, slamming the door with some force before she left. The door couldn't withstand her force, breaking into small pieces. She was very angry. Hiruzen sighed heavily, watching Tsunade's back and the fate of the door. Hokage-sama. I know. Blowing smoke from his pipe to calm himself, Hiruzen looked at the Umbu hunter dressed in white, who was now kneeling on one knee. As the third Hokage, I relieve you of your duties as captain. Accompany the new captain tomorrow. Yes, Hokage-sama. Hiruzen couldn't see the expression on the hunter's face, but from his voice, he could tell that he was quite disheartened. Shaking his head, Hiruzen remembered what happened an hour ago. Chapter 22, Copy Ninja It's time. Yes, indeed. Let's start this party. Alright, let's begin. From now on, things will be fun. Let's make it grand. Various shadows conversed in the darkness of the forest, each one identical, clad in black suits with red patterns. The darkness enveloped each figure. Hi hi, Hokage-sama, this is not something you can refuse. With a wicked smile, the figures were swallowed by the darkness. Hokage-sama, Yuki Uchiha wants to see you. While working on a pile of documents, the Hokage raised an eyebrow at his assistant. Yuki what does the boy want this time is he with Tsunade? No, he's alone. He said he has an important message that only you should hear. Shaking his head, the Jonin replied. Hiruzen lost himself in thoughts, he didn't want to see the boy. This child was a headache, and if not for being Tsunade's godson, he would have taught him a lesson by now. Sighing, Hiruzen thought it wouldn't be a bad idea to see him, if it's an important message, regardless of the boy's character, he has to listen. All right, let him in. Yes, Hokage-sama. As the Jonin followed orders and left, Hiruzen blew smoke from his pipe. Will be a short break, looking at the pile of documents, Hiruzen thought it might not be so bad. However, he didn't know that facing that paperwork was better than talking to the boy. Good morning, Hokage-sama, bowing slightly, a handsome boy with an eye patch entered. Hiruzen looked at the boy who made his life difficult. Oh Yuki, what do you want? Hiruzen didn't want to waste time with the boy. Blowing pipe smoke, he urged him to speak. Hi hi hi, you see, Hokage-sama, I have a small request. Wasn't it an important message Yuki, you? Before he could finish, something incredible happened. Bang. The sound of a gunshot echoed in the office. The jonin accompanying Yuki fell, blood quickly staining the floor, a deep wound in his heart. Hiruzen's eyes widened at this. Hokage-sama x3. Quickly, three Umbu hunters emerged from the darkness, surrounding Hiruzen. Hi hi, nay Hokage-sama, it's a very important request, Yuki said with a cruel smile on his face. Yuki Uchiha. What have you done is he dead you killed him. Ma it's not that bad, Hokage-sama. After all, ninjas die someday. Hiruzen looked at the boy in front of him, saw a deep darkness in his eyes, the boy had activated the mature Sherry Nan. Hiruzen was a bit surprised, the boy had a mature Sherry Nan. Yuki, you. Well, why don't we get down to business? However, before he finished speaking, something flashed on his neck Akuno. Don't move. Appearing behind Yuki was an Umbu hunter with white hair and a fox mask. Hi hi hi, as expected from an Umbu hunter. And to think there was a fourth. Despite having a kunao at his neck, Yuki was calm. The Umbu hunter frowned at this. I've heard of you, big brother. Are you the ninja who copies the one with the sherry non? Turning his head a bit, Yuki looked at him with a smile. There was something wrong with that smile, the Umbu hunter felt it. It was too calm, too unsettling. Enough, Yuki. You've gone too far. Assassinating a ninja in the Hokage's office is a serious crime. Shaking his head, Hiruzen looked at the boy. This time, not even Tsunade can help you. 
but she doesn't have to help me, Hokage-sama. After all, you'll let me go and won't tell anyone about this. Hiruzen frowned, he had a very bad feeling. What do you mean? Ma you see, Hokage-sama, I have a little hobby. In my free time, I love to eat, and sometimes I discover many things in the process. Pausing, Yuki put a finger on his lips. Don't move. The kunao at his neck tightened, letting out some blood. Come on, big brother, don't be so nervous. After all, I'm not hungry now, right, guys? With those words, several white arms emerged from the ground, binding him. Clones. Close, but you're mistaken. Hiruzen was surprised, several clones appeared in his office. He didn't know what jutsu this was, but he had to admit they caught him off guard. Hump. No, don't underestimate us, kid. You're not the only one with clones. I'd appreciate it if you stayed still, Mr. Hunter. After all, it will be troublesome if you don't. Tokihami no Shiro. A huge shadow began to emerge from Yuki, instantly covering the office. What another jutsu? Appearing behind Yuki, a huge ancient golden clock. Hiruzen, who was watching all this, couldn't help but widen his eyes, the eye patch had disappeared, revealing a golden eye with a clock in it. The clock's hands began to move, and Yuki's attire changed. Aleph. Pointing his spark gun at his head, Yuki pulled the trigger. Seeing this, the Umbu hunters, of course, wouldn't stand idly by. As they prepared to counter-attack and escape with the Hokage, their bodies began to feel heavy, while several white hands emerged simultaneously. Seeing this, they jumped to dodge, but... Bang bang, bang. However, they received several incredible impacts to their bodies. Arg. In less than a second, their bodies fell to the ground, and white hands immobilized them. Hi hi hi, it's better if you don't move, Yuki said, appearing behind the Umbu hunters. He had shot his gun at a terrifying speed. Several clones quickly approached, placing their weapons at their heads. Don't move, Mr. Hunter. My hand might slip, after all, hi hi hi. Hiruzen looked at his defeated hunters in seconds. The speed shown by Yuki was terrifying. Teleportation no, it's not that. Thinking about the terrifying speed shown by the boy, Hiruzen remembered a certain jutsu capable of it, but even that jutsu had its limitations. Speed, strength, barrier. This is troublesome. Thinking deeply, Hiruzen looked cautiously at the boy. If he can keep up with that speed. I appreciate your cooperation by not intervening, Hokage-sama, Yuki said with a slight bow. Hiruzen looked around, there were more than 15 clones in the office, 10 of them pointing a strange weapon at him. Despite that, he took the boy seriously. However, this feeling. Well now it's your turn, Hokage-sama. Aiming his weapon, Yuki prepared to pull the trigger. Puchi. Squeak. However, a hand pierced through his body, electrified and producing a sound like a thousand birds. Looking at his bloodied abdomen, Yuki turned his gaze. There stood the Umbu hunter with white hair and a fox mask. Turning his gaze, there was another Umbu hunter with the same white hair and fox mask. Squeak. After a slight squeak, the Umbu hunter disappeared, electrocuting the white hands. A shadow clone lightning shroud as expected from you, Mr. Hunter. Living up to your reputation. Despite having a hole in his body, Yuki kept talking as if none of this concerned him, though blood spilled from his mouth in the process. The Umbu hunter and Hiruzen frowned at this. But Mr. Hunter, let me tell you a secret. You know, this barrier is my special jutsu, so it has several small functions. For example, don't you feel weaker with every passing second? This was true, with each passing second in the barrier, the fatigue became stronger. You're draining our chakra. Applause. Exactly. As expected from a Sherry non-user, you noticed it instantly. Even with a smile on his face, Yuki applauded for this. The Umbu Hunter's jutsu had ended, revealing his blood-covered hand. While I'd love to keep chatting with you, Mr. Hunter, my time is up. With a final smile, Yuki fell to the ground in blood. The hunter looked at this in confusion. Puchi. Squeak. 
So please, this is my last warning, Mr. Hunter. Don't move. A hand pierced through the right shoulder of the hunter, electrified. Seeing this, the hunter had a deja vu. Behind him, Yuki appeared, unharmed. The hunter opened his eyes wide at this sight. Is it a genjutsu? No, that's impossible. However, he was also surprised by something else. This. This is Reikari. That jutsu was terribly familiar to the hunter. Feeling his surprise, Yuki smiled. Please, don't be so surprised, Mr. Hunter. After all, you're not the only one who copies jutsu. After finishing his jutsu, several white hands appeared, binding the hunter. Another clone materialized, aiming a gun at his head. I didn't feel his chakra I understand, it's a trap. The hunter looked at the smiling clone, it was a cruel smile. Please, don't look like that, Mr. Hunter. After all, it would be problematic if the mouse didn't come out of its hole. Aiming at the hookage, deliberately showing his back, ensuring his clones wouldn't act, everything was a trap to force the Umbu Hunter to reveal himself. Given the nature of the Umbu Hunter, it was impossible for him not to act. Predicting his actions at this level was terrifying. This kid is frightening. But what about the other body? Well, the games are over. The hunter stared at Yuki, the body he had attacked disappeared into the darkness. His eyes widened in surprise before a gun touched his head. Hiruzen also looked with clear surprise. Although he worried that the hunter had killed the boy, he never thought the boy had that trick up his sleeve. Well, here's my little request, Hokage-sama. Taking a brief pause, Yuki crossed his arms and looked disdainfully at Hiruzen. Hiruzen also silently contemplated the boy, he was surrounded by clones pointing a strange weapon at him, making him take the boy seriously. I want to be an Umbu captain. Eh. Eh. Chapter 23, Devourer. I want to be an Umbu captain. Hiruzen looked wordlessly at Yuki, the smile on his face and his request were far from good. The Umbu hunters were also surprised. Why what are you planning, kid? Plans no, no, you're overestimating me, Hokage-sama. I've simply always admired Itaki, being Umbu, and all. Waving his hand, Yuki smiled cunningly. But also, I've set out to be better than Itaki, so I thought. By being a captain, would I surpass Itaki? Yuki's eyes gleamed dangerously as he spoke these words. Hiruzen squinted his eyes, he, of course, didn't believe a word, everything about the boy screamed lies. Becoming an Umbu captain doesn't happen overnight, you need strength and experience, not just. But I have the strength and experience, Hokage-sama, don't you think Yuki interrupted, not letting the Hokage finish. It's not about that, you just can't. Well, Hokage-sama, don't say that. I hope this might make my request come true. Interrupting again, Yuki had a clone handed document to Hiruzen. Hiruzen looked suspiciously at the document in the clone's hands, but sighed tiredly, there was nothing to fear. If the boy wanted him dead, he would have attacked long ago. Taking the document, Hiruzen decided not to waste time and read it. This. Hiruzen's eyes widened in shock as he read the content of the document, and with each page, he felt strength draining away. As you see, Hokage sama I hope with this, my request will be accepted. Yuki enjoyed seeing the shock on Hiruzen's face, he looked at him with interest. The Umbu hunters didn't know what was in the document, but judging by the Hokage's reaction, it wasn't something good. Yuki, how long have you known about this? Since when? Hmm? I wonder, since when? Closing his eyes and crossing his arms, Yuki tilted his head in thought. Hiruzen, seeing this, knew the boy wouldn't say anything. My mistake, I'll ask again. Yuki, who else knows about this? Yuki smiled at his question. I wonder about that too. It depends on your answer, Hokage-sama. If your answer is satisfactory, only you and I will know. Otherwise, I might slip and tell Sister Tsunade, Mr. Hayashi, the Nara clan, the Abarame clan, the whole village, and perhaps all the ninja nations. Hi hi hi. With a cruel smile, Yuki looked at the Hokage, the Umbu hunters were stunned, witnessing the Hokage being threatened, and by a child no less. Are you threatening me, Yuki? Oh, 
This is concerning. I would never dare to threaten you, Hokage-sama. Yuki turned his gaze and looked at one of his clones. You, tell me, am I threatening him? Of course not. Who would dare the clone responded, shaking its head. Yuki nodded and looked at another clone. And you, am I threatening him? Impossible, I just see an old man giving wise advice to a young one. Yuki nodded and looked at an Umbu hunter. Mr. Hunter, tell me, am I threatening him? The Umbu hunter trembled a bit, seeing Yuki's eyes, in them, he saw a terrifying creature, fangs bared, looking at him with hunger. And no, I see. Nothing, the hunter said with a trembling voice. Yuki smiled cunningly at this. Turning his gaze back to the Hokage, Yuki spread his arms. As you can see, Hokage-sama, no one here is threatening you. I'm just here because I want to be an Umbu captain. No, on second thought, I'd like Hokage-sama to give me full control of Umbu. You can see it as a birthday gift. Sweat drops ran down Hiruzen's face, he had never felt so defenseless before. Looking at the document, he could see explicit evidence of the Uchiha clan massacre two years ago, along with the story behind it. There were also specific points about holes in Kanaha's barrier, important locations, shelters, confidential information about S-rank jutsus, as well as forbidden ones from the library. There were many things in that document, every secret and high-level missions. I wonder what the major clans would think if they knew they could disappear at any moment. Hiruzen trembled a bit at the thought. It could be the beginning of another coup. Hi hi, how fun, don't you think? Hokage-sama can you massacre all the clans of Kanaha more importantly, do you have the power to do it I wonder what the other nations would think when they find out how defenseless Kanaha is. Hi hi. He got me Hiruzen's shoulders slumped, he knew it was his biggest mistake, the killing of the entire Uchiha clan. He looked at Yuki for a moment before sighing. This is my punishment. The Umbu hunters were confused by all this, but one of them understood. The Umbu with the pierced shoulder looked at the duo with bloodshot eyes, not wanting to believe what he just heard, but judging by the Hokage's reaction, he knew it was very likely true. Still, I don't have the authority for this. You have it, you're the Hokage, after all. No, you have to do it. Or else. Pointing the spark pistol, Yuki looked at the Umbu hunter who had answered his question. At. Yud Aleph. Bang. Ugh. A bullet pierced his abdomen, after which his body was swallowed by darkness, letting out groans of pain, blood flowed on the floor. Silence fell in the room, Hiruzen and the Umbu hunters stared wide-eyed, horrified by the bloodstains and the cries of the latter. Thanks for the meal. Wiping his mouth, Yuki smiled. Yuki. You. Are. The devourer. Said the Umbu hunter with the fox mask, finishing Hiruzen's words. Well, I don't know what you're talking about, Mr. Hunter. The Umbu hunter was speechless, wondering how thick his skin was. Hiruzen felt his headache worsening, this devourer had caused him many problems, being a class S criminal, but no one knew who he was and what he looked like, unaware that he was under their noses all this time. Forget about it, from today, Umbu is yours. Good answer. Snapping his fingers, both Tokihami no Shiro and the clones disappeared, and the hunters were released. Ha, ha. Several of them were breathing heavily, pressing the wound in their bodies, drained of chakra and blood loss had affected them. Hiruzen looked again at Yuki, who was now in his previous clothes. Oh I almost forgot, better not tell Sister Tsunade and that old shadow Danzo. Of course, don't play those little dirty tricks on me either. I believe you're aware that even if you kill me, the bomb will explode. Turning to leave, Yuki glanced back. This goes for you too. Big Brother Kakashi. Staring at the Umbu with the fox mask, Yuki tilted his head and smiled. After all, you wouldn't want me to visit Rin Nohara's grave. You know, I love learning new jutsus, and there's one in particular I'd love to try, it's called Edo Tensei. Kakashi's body trembled at the mention of Rin Nohara's name, the idea of something happening to her grave angered him. However, his body froze at the mention of Edo Tensei. Hiruzen was also a bit stunned by this, but then he calmed down, thinking it wouldn't be a surprise if the boy knew. There were many more secrets in that document. So, 
you also know about Danza. What do you plan to do here isn't frowned a bit, asking, but he also considered the goals of the devourer, each one related to Root. This child. This doesn't concern you, Hokage-sama. I'd appreciate it if you didn't get involved. Yuki's smile had disappeared, his eyes were sharp and fierce. I understand. Looking at Yuki one last time, Hiruzen smiled. Well, have a good day. With a slight bow, Yuki left the room. No one stopped him, in fact, no one wanted to stop him. They still felt the chills from what had just transpired. Go to the hospital and call the Umbu captain. Yes, Hokage-sama. With a blink, the hunters disappeared. Hiruzen sighed heavily as he sat down. He felt like he had aged ten years. The Devourer. Yuki Uchiha, were we dancing in the palm of your hand all this time? With the puff of his pipe, Hiruzen looked at the sky. The alliances with the clans, Tsunade's adoption, the disappearance of the Umbu, the multiple pranks, everything was leading to this. Killing him is no longer an option. Tsunade, you've taken in a devourer. Danzo, you and I created him. With these last words, Hiruzen closed his eyes. Chapter 24, Sacred Lands It's time for me to return, said Yuki, caressing a small pink pig. Oink, oink, hearing these words, the pig looked at Yuki. What, should I stop doing troublesome things not, Taunton, no worries, my life would be meaningless without them. Oink, oink. I shouldn't cause trouble for the older sister Tsunade but she also has fun with this. Sighing slightly, Yuki looked at the pig, smiled, and braced himself for the impending storm. Well, I think I should go. Click. Opening the door to leave, Yuki found Shizun in defensive mode. You're not leaving, Yuki. Yuki looked at Shizun, who had her hands extended. You have little trust in me, older sister Shizun. I didn't plan on leaving, in fact, I'll wait for the older sister Tsunade at the training ground. I'll follow you. With suspicious eyes, Shizun didn't buy his nonsense, he always manages to deceive her, but this time, she wouldn't let him escape. Older sister Shizun, this time I won't escape. I have to face her. With a raised fist, Yuki looked seriously at Shizun. Shizun looked surprised for a few seconds before touching her head. What are you planning now? Cruel I'm not planning anything. Only someone with a thick face like yours could lie so easily. Looking at himself for a few seconds, Yuki couldn't help but be at a loss for words, but it's true, he has a face as thick as a wall. Don't worry, older sister Shizun. I'm just going to fulfill my promise. Raising her eyebrows, Shizun looked at Yuki before turning to Tantan, who just shook his head in confusion. Promise. Yes. From today, I'll put an end to the older sister Tsunade's single life. With shining eyes, Yuki left the room, unconcerned about the surprised Shizun. With a tired sigh, Shizun hugged Tantan. She didn't know what the little demon was planning, but she had a feeling it wasn't anything good. She left the room and decided to wait for Tsunade. Tsunade was angry. I'm going to kill this brat. Like an eruption, Tsunade entered her house. Yuki! Bring that butt of yours here this instant. Roaring like a lion, Tsunade took large strides. Shizun and Tantan trembled at this. Where's the brat escaped again? He's in the... Training ground. Good. A good place for his burial. Without wasting time, Tsunade walked quickly, she wanted to smack the brat, fearing that he might escape again. Why ah she's really angry Shizun covered her mouth with her hand, she knew Tsunade was angry. Tsunade usually called the kid little Yuki, but now she called him brat, and she wondered what Yuki had done this time to anger her so much. Feeling curious, she followed Tsunade. Yuki crossed his arms while waiting for the furious lioness. And the furious lioness didn't make him wait long. Something shone and fell at great speed. Good. I admire your courage for not running away, brat. From a slight crater emerged a furious figure. Tsunade looked at the kid who didn't budge a single step after seeing her, she was a bit surprised. The brat always escaped when Tsunade was angry. Well older sister Tsunade, I couldn't run forever. Besides, as a man, 
I have to face it someday. With a hand on his chest, Yuki struck a dignified pose. Tsunade couldn't help but be suspicious of the kid. What are you planning? Cruel it's my unlucky day. No one wants to believe in this innocent child. You're not fooling anyone with that face. A vein throbbed on Tsunade's head, she felt like her years were decreasing every time she got angry with this kid. Anyway. Grit your teeth. Clenching her fists, Tsunade walked towards Yuki, a fierce smile on her face. Wait a moment, older sister Tsunade. Time out. Stop. Waving his hands quickly, Yuki stopped Tsunade. What don't think you'll escape this? No, 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 older sister Tsunade, I'm not planning to escape. I'll accept the punishment. But, what if we make it more interesting? Um. Tsunade tilted her head in confusion, she knew the kid was up to something, but she was also curious. Speak. Yes, of course. Wiping cold sweat, Yuki looked at the newcomers, Shizun and Tantan. Tsunade also looked at them but didn't pay them any mind, waiting for Yuki's proposal. If we're going to fight, let's make a bet. If I lose, I promise to spill all the beans, and I'll also prepare all your favorite meals for a week. Otsunade was instantly interested in this. And if you win with a sly smile on his face, Yuki looked at Tsunade, more precisely at her chest. An awkward silence, Shizun and Tantan were left speechless by Yuki's shamelessness. Tsunade was also surprised by how forward the kid was. Young brat precocious. Not older sister Tsunade, it was love at first sight. I promised, I said that someday I would end the single life of my older sister Tsunade. How come I never heard such a promise? With suspicion in her eyes, Tsunade didn't believe his nonsense. I see. And the real reason? Of course, I wouldn't let those breasts belong to another man. Those sacred lands are only mine. I've claimed them as my territory. I am the lord of those lands. With a slight blush and a perverted look, Yuki revealed his true intentions. Tsunade was speechless, Shizun and Tantan stared at him with wide eyes. Pervert, a soft murmur escaped Shizun's mouth. Fine, let's do it. After a brief silence, Tsunade accepted the bet. Tsunade Sama. Shizun couldn't help but reprimand. Tsunade looked at her for a moment before adding. But let's make it bigger. How about this if we also add Shizun's breasts to the bet, two pairs of tits for one, not a bad deal, right? Tsunade Sama. Shizun's face turned red at her words, Tsunade didn't care, only waiting for Yuki's response. Oh tempting, I must admit it's a good offer. What if I lose Yuki touched his chin, thinking, he looked at Shizun, more specifically at her breasts. Shizun's face turned even redder due to Yuki's intense gaze. She glanced at Tsunade and Yuki, realizing she was surrounded by perverts. If you lose, you'll leave the village with me for three years. Do you dare with a mocking smile? Tsunade taunted him. Yuki, of course, wouldn't let this opportunity pass. What man would reject another pair of breasts of course, I accept. My clan lacks members, after all. This was the moment. Shizun lost strength in her body for a moment. Tsunade and Yuki stared at each other for a moment, both with a smile on their faces. Chapter 25, Cookie Yos no Jutsu Why am I doing this with a tired look? Shizun glanced at the couple on the battlefield. Both had a fiery aura about them. You better start packing, brat. I'll kick you out of the village even if I have to use force. No, you better get ready to change clans, big sister Tsunade, because after this, you'll be called Tsunade Uchiha. Try it if you have the guts. Challenge accepted. Shizun just shook her head at this. Are you ready Shizun raised her hand, observing as the referee. More than ready, those breasts are calling me. Prepare yourself for some broken bones, brat. The tension grew with each verbal exchange, Shizun sighed at the antics. Begin. Both rushed as Shizun signaled the start of the battle. Ha. Ha. Tsunade threw a punch, and Yuki responded in kind. Both fists collided, creating intense pressure. Kia Shizun was surprised by this exchange. Neither of them budged an inch. Not bad. You're learning fast. 
Tsunade praised Yuki with a fierce smile. It would be a waste not to learn, especially with a beautiful big sister like you, Tsunade. Emphasizing her name, Yuki returned the smile, a vein pulsating on Tsunade's forehead. Don't underestimate me, brat. Even if you match my strength, you don't have my endurance. Breaking the initial clash, they both unleashed kicks. Again, the kicks collided, creating strong winds. Ha! Ha! Bam! 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 Exchanging blows, their fists clashed, and strong gusts of wind made Shizen briefly close her eyes. Are they evenly matched? Bam! 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 It was the same Teijutsu, wherever Tsunade struck, Yuki retaliated in the same spot they were synchronized. Bam! Bam! Several sequences of blows were exchanged. Tsunade gained the upper hand, but Yuki struck back with his fists. They were evenly matched in strength and speed, neither could gain an advantage. A small crater formed when Tsunade hit the ground. Yuki quickly jumped back, maintaining distance. Although they seemed evenly matched, there was a difference. She increased her strength. As Tsunade had said, she was boosting her strength with each strike. I can't keep up. What's wrong didn't you want to take me as your girlfriend giving up already, brat Tsunade taunted Yuki, surprised at how quickly he had learned the strength of a hundred and fuinjutsu. Tsunade had to admit Yuki was a battle genius, absorbing all her knowledge like a sponge. Fun. You asked for it, big sister. Don't worry, I'll make sure to fondle those breasts every day. With a thought, his right eye changed, turning crimson. Here it comes. The Sherry Nan. Tsunade also got serious, she knew the brat was capable. If I can't match Teijutsu. Let's try Ninjutsu. Hayatan, Kori no Suteru. With a swift hand sequence, Yuki struck the ground, causing it to change, and multiple ice plates emerged. Hum. Your little crystals are nothing against strength. Smashing the ground, Tsunade easily destroyed the ninjutsu. However, Yuki smiled at this. Jumping, he quickly prepared his next jutsu. Hayatan, Ice Yoshipeku. Dozens of ice spikes materialized, falling rapidly toward Tsunade. With no chance to dodge, several ice spikes pierced Tsunade's body or so it seemed. Poof. Substitution. Tsunade's body was replaced by a wooden log. Ha. Falling from the sky, Yuki received Tsunade's punch, his body crashed into the ground, breaking the earth on impact. Eh is that all how boring, and here I thought I'd end up with a boyfriend. With a smile, Tsunade approached Yuki, she knew this blow would at least render the brat unconscious. Eh. However, she quickly noticed an anomaly her arm was frozen. Glancing at Yuki, she opened her eyes wide. Ice clone. Splat. Two arms emerged from the ground, grabbing Tsunade's legs. Raiten, Denki Kiji. Powerful electricity surged through Tsunade's body. Kia. This jutsu was potent for the human body, using blood directly as a conductor, destroying tissues and muscles in the process. Yuki knew the human body was an excellent electricity conductor. This jutsu was the perfect counter for a Teijutsu user, a nemesis for those relying on brute force. It hurts like hell. Don't underestimate me. With a strong stomp, Tsunade freed herself, the earth around her cracked, crushing Yuki into the ground. And another clone. Tsunade's leg froze as she struck Yuki's clone. As expected of big sister Tsunade, that wasn't enough to stop you, but... We're just getting started. With the rapid hand sequence, Yuki unleashed another jutsu. Hayatan, Kori no Rin. Rising from the ground, a massive ice lion materialized, measuring 3 meters in height and 7 meters in length. Roar. With a mane and fangs, it resembled a lion but had a metallic exoskeleton, creating a protective layer. With a mental command, the lion charged at Tsunade. I told you. Your little crystals are useless against strength. Amplifying her fist with chakra, Tsunade struck the lion, a mocking smile on her face, expecting to shatter the fragile ice. And her smile quickly froze, the lion didn't break as she anticipated. Instead, it absorbed her blow and bared its teeth. Quickly leaping away, Tsunade looked at Yuki, who grinned at her. 
Didn't think I'd waste my chakra on a useless jutsu, did you? You brat. The lion continued to harass Tsunade, every time she struck, it retaliated with more force. The lion's speed was high, and Tsunade couldn't get rid of it. Seeing Yuki's mocking smile, Tsunade clenched her fists, deciding she needed to teach him a lesson. Let's see how much longer you can keep smiling. Biting her thumb, Tsunade performed a hand sequence, jumped back, and placed her hand on the ground, several black lines extended. Cookie yos no jutsu. Poof. A large amount of smoke spread, Yuki's smile froze. He looked up and couldn't help but curse at the unfairness of Tsunade's move. Chapter 26, The Shadow of the Past A massive smoke cloud emerged from the training ground. Several ninjas turned in its direction. Are we under attack they exclaimed. After a few seconds, its contents were revealed a giant white and blue slug. A small silhouette stood on the worm's head. Isn't that Tsunade Sama's summoning remarked a woman with black hair and red eyes, bandages adorning her. Yes, it seems so. But who is she fighting replied a man with black hair, a cigarette in his mouth, staring intently at the summoning. Hey. Kurane, Asuma. Both turned towards the caller, a man with black hair, a distinctive haircut, and dressed entirely in green, running towards them. What's up, guy? Tsunade Sama is fighting. Who's her opponent don't you want to take a look guy said with a smile, a gleam in his white toothed grin. Kurane and Asuma exchanged glances, curious about who compelled Tsunade to use her summoning. Isn't it Jiraiya Sama I think it's very likely, Kurane responded thoughtfully. The other two agreed, there were very few ninjas capable of facing Tsunade. However, soon another smoke cloud appeared. From it emerged a gigantic blue lion with a massive exoskeleton, its mane looking fierce. That's definitely not Jiraiya Sama. Observing the strange summoning, both nodded and decided to take a closer look. Dash dash. Leaping backward, Yuki watched as his ice lion was melted by acid. That's unfair. Summonings are forbidden. Feeling dismayed by the colossal slug, Yuki couldn't help but complain. We never said anything about that. Besides, you want my hand in marriage. Don't complain. Marriage Yuki started sweating, he never said he would marry, and he's just 11 years old. I guess age is frustrating her. Puchi. Having these thoughts, Yuki jumped to dodge the acid shot by the slug. For some reason, I feel like you're thinking very rudely of me. Tsunade had a somewhat twisted smile as veins bulged on her forehead. I it must be your imagination, big sister Tsunade. Yuki was now scared, the sensitivity of this woman brought him fear. Well then. Are you giving up, Brad? It's time you accepted your defeat. TCH. Clicking his tongue, Yuki had to admit that without using Zafkiel, beating her was very difficult. Can't help it. I'll have to use it. Taking a breath, Yuki quickly bit his thumb and formed hand signs, feeling more than half of his chakra being consumed. Yuki looked at Tsunade. All right, you asked for it. Summoning Jutsu, Great Ice Lion. Poof. A massive smoke cloud spread across the field. Roar. Emerging from it was a giant ice lion, its exoskeleton, and main striking. This was one of Yuki's secret weapons. He had spent a month creating this beast, so he stored it in his shadow dimension, intending to use it only in desperate situations. Who would have thought he would use it to subdue a woman I revealed one of my cards. But those assets are worth it, however, Yuki didn't regret it, he saw it as an investment for the future. Tsunade opened her mouth in shock at the sight of the giant. Truth be told, it looked very intimidating its aura, large fangs, exoskeleton, mane, claws, all in a deep sapphire blue color. Tsunade had to admit that this summoning was powerful. Maybe. More powerful than Jiraiya's toads. Tsunade smiled, looked at Yuki, and couldn't help but feel proud. She had trained the kid for two years, and he had become powerful. Yet, she glimpsed a shadow for a moment a little brown-haired boy with gray eyes, rosy cheeks, and a bright smile, touching his forehead protector. Nawaka. Yuki looked at Tsunade's smile, unable to prevent his chest from tightening. He knew. He knew very well that, to Tsunade, he was just a replacement. Lowering his head, the shadow hid his eyes. 
he knew Tsunade's gaze wasn't directed at him, it was aimed at someone else in him. That look was what Yuki hated the most. Look at me. Tsunade snapped out of her reverie upon hearing Yuki's shout. Yuki no longer smiled, his gaze had changed. Seeing him, Tsunade couldn't help but have a bitter look. You're always like this, Tsunade. Why don't you look at me once in your life? Yuki's cherry non glowed dangerously. Roar. Issuing a mental command, the lion attacked, biting the blue slug, which split into several smaller slugs with each bite. Tsunade and Yuki stared at each other, neither acting, just locking eyes. One harbored resentment and suspicion, while the other displayed uncertainty and insecurity. Neither spoke, after some time, Tsunade averted her gaze. She couldn't handle Yuki's stare, she knew he was deeply upset. Tsunade sama, murmured Shizun. Yuki's words had touched her. Tsunade never looked at Yuki, she always sought a replacement to fill the void in her heart, and Yuki was that replacement. Tiny tears fell from Shizun's eyes. The profound sadness in Yuki's gaze triggered her maternal instinct, she wanted to run and hug the child, to tell him everything was okay. Tsunade blamed herself for this, she knew Yuki's past, his family. Everyone had left, leaving the child alone. She was the same, everyone had left, leaving her alone. That's why she sympathized with the boy. However, now she realized how unfair she had been to Yuki by ignoring him. The boy brought her troubles, but he brought her more happiness than ever. Now drowning in alcohol, not to forget, but in happiness, the boy was her light, but at the same time, he was her replacement. I'm sorry. Roar. With a final attack, the slug's body exploded into small slugs, Tsunade's body falling. However, she didn't care about that, she simply closed her eyes. Before falling, someone lifted her in their arms. Poof, poof. Both summonings disappeared, their purposes had been fulfilled. Both sides had lost their fighting spirit. Landing, Yuki gently lowered Tsunade. Opening her eyes, Tsunade looked at Yuki's face. Yuki, I, shaking his head, the dangerous look in Yuki's eyes had disappeared. It's okay, big sister Tsunade. I'm not asking you to forget your past, to forget any of your family. I'm not asking you to reject your pain. I don't even care if you hate me. I just want you to look at me, to overcome it. Raising his hand, Yuki touched Tsunade's chest. Look at me, big sister. I'll be the same poison if necessary, I'll crawl and won't stop until I find a place in your heart. My feelings are real, my heart beats very fast, so it doesn't matter if you push me away or despise me. I promise to make you the happiest woman in the world. Patting Tsunade's head, Yuki responded with a smile, and Tsunade's face blushed for the first time in two years. She was looking at the black-haired boy with a crimson eye and an eye patch. Wiping away tears, Yuki leaned in, and before closing Tsunade's lips with his own, Tsunade opened her eyes in surprise. Not only her but also Shizun was left dumbfounded. I lost. After parting their lips, they embraced, thus ending their little fight. However, no one noticed the small smile that escaped Yuki's face. I won. Chapter 27, Tsunade's Love Yuki knew he had won. Against an enemy stronger than him, the only way to win was to find their weakness and strike at the exact moment. Yuki waited patiently, anticipating the precise moment to strike Tsunade. The chances of success were slim, but he persisted, aware that Tsunade had a soft spot, and he exploited it to the fullest. He became a poison slowly seeping into her heart unnoticed jokes, meals, pranks all designed to make Tsunade start noticing him. He succeeded. Yuki understood that defeating Tsunade without using Zafkiel had less than a 20% chance, so he waited to play his trump card. He had experienced relationships in his past life, mostly fleeting, so he knew hitting a woman in her weakest state ensured success. He might be a bastard for toying with Tsunade's emotions, but the promise to make her the happiest woman in the world was genuine. That's why he had no regrets. All for victory, my happiness, and the happiness of my loved ones. Neither of them wanted to break the embrace, they remained like that for several minutes. Shizun was at a loss for words, confused by the sudden shift from fighting and anger to happiness. For some reason, 
she felt a twinge of jealousy. On the other side, the three Jonin were dumbfounded by what had just transpired. They arrived to witness a child battling Tsunade. They marveled at the boy's skill but quickly recognized him. Hey guy, is that Yuki Asuma asked with a shaky voice, his cigarette trembling dangerously. Yes, he is. Unlike Asuma, Guy responded with a bright smile, sensing the youthfulness burning within the boy. Hum he's become quite strong. Kurane, with a finger on her lips, looked at the boy with interest. Asuma glanced at Kurane and couldn't help but grit his teeth. The brat had made his life miserable, and he couldn't do anything because Kurane protected him. Yuki enjoyed playing dirty tricks on Kurane, and Asuma knew it. He was frustrated. While they observed the battle, Asuma decided it was the perfect time to belittle the kid. Hey guy, who do you think will win? Tsunade Sama, of course. Guy, though surprised by the boy, knew that defeating Tsunade was just a dream. I thought so. Haha, <laughs> I wonder what he did this time to get Tsunade Sama to hit him. He's a naughty kid after all. Asuma's lips twisted, and Kurane frowned at him. Yuki is just a mischievous child. Besides, he's fighting one of the legendary Sunin, it's normal for him to lose. Asuma lowered his shoulders in defeat as Kurane's protective side surfaced. Look at me. However, as they continued their conversation, they witnessed a dramatic scene between the couple. Tsunade lost all fighting capacity in the constant claims of Yuki. The giants fought, but the two remained motionless. After a few minutes, both summonings disappeared. They saw the couple on the ground, and despite expecting it, they couldn't help but be shocked. They witnessed Yuki's intense confession and Tsunade's tears. After a few seconds, they saw the couple kissing. Asuma's cigarette fell from his mouth, Guy's mouth was wide open, and Kurane blushed, putting a hand to her lips to contain her excitement. How romantic, a small murmur escaped Kurane's lips, so low that only Asuma beside her heard it. Asuma turned to look at Kurane, feeling thoroughly depressed. Even a kid was better than him at this. He thought maybe he should take a couple of tips from the kid later. Kurane, on the other hand, had a look of longing. Confessing in the midst of battle, being held by someone, and confessing feelings very romantic. In this world of fights and wars, such moments were rare and highly desired by Kunoichis. Kurane was no exception, sighing at Tsunade's luck, even if the one confessing was a 12-year-old boy. I guess I won. Right, big sister Tsunade. Looking at Yuki, Tsunade sighed. She was internally conflicted, being kissed and hugged by a child made her blush a bit in embarrassment. Yes. I surrender. She looked up at the sky. I guess it's time to get over it. A smile formed on her face, she felt strangely good, as if something had been unleashed inside her. Yay. I won. Those breasts are mine. Without any reservations, Yuki buried his head in Tsunade's chest. Tsunade sighed at his perverted behavior but genuinely cared for the kid. In the two years they had known each other, she had been overly protective. As a Uchiha clan child, she kept a watchful eye, ensuring that the old shadow of Danzo wouldn't lay hands on him, and she did the same with her sensei. That's why she was so angry when her sensei wanted to recruit him into Umbu. She felt that all her efforts had gone to waste, wanting to hit the kid for being ungrateful. However, she made one last bet. She wanted to keep Yuki away from the village, so she accepted his bet, thinking that three years would be enough for the village and Yuki to stabilize. But she lost. I just have to support him from now on. With that in mind, she hugged the boy tightly before applying more force. Ouch big sister. I can't breathe. Now that I remember, you haven't told me why you decided to join Umbu. Hmm. Tsunade, still smiling, applied more force to her hug. She decided not to let him go until he spilled all the beans. Yuki felt like he was both going to heaven and falling into hell simultaneously, the lack of oxygen wasn't helping. Shizun didn't know what to say, watching them. After a moment, she sighed, deciding not to interrupt the pair of perverts. Chapter 28, Cleaning That same night, Yuki received a message on the chat, the floating screen appeared, and Mikato expressed her sadness. Yuki Uchiha Champion, be patient, don't do anything you might regret. 
Mikato Misaka, even if you say that. There's no way I'll just stand by and do nothing. Is it my fault is it my fault that they all died? Mikato was devastated, sitting on a bench, waiting for dawn. She didn't sleep in her room that night. She looked at the floating screen in front of her as tears ran down her face. Yuki Uchiha champion, no, it's not your fault. Your actions were noble in donating your DNA. There's a saying in my world, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. So, don't worry, Mikato. Smile. We can revive your sisters, just wait for me. Misaka's eyes couldn't help but shine with hope. Mikato Misaka, thank you. I'll be waiting for your arrival. Yuki Uchiha champion, wait for me. Wiping her tears, Misaka stood up. Looking out into the dark academy city, she smiled. Only 16 hours left. Yuki had given her strict instructions about the chat. She was mentally stressed, but relieved that someone would help bear her burden. Dash dash. Yuki sighed, Mikato's problems were thorny, but he trusted he could resolve them. All he lacked was strength. Even though he lacked it now, he knew the journey to obtain it would be exciting. Yuki loved three things most in the world, adventure, challenges, and sex. He believed as long as he had them, he would be happy. That's why he found Mikato's world thrilling. He wasn't foolish, that's why he chose to wait. With that thought, he entered the world of dreams. Dash dash. The next day, after bidding farewell to Suzuki, Yuki had a matter to attend to. An umbu hunter had arrived at his residence, wearing a boar mask and white clothing. Time already. Yes, our people have gathered, we only await your presence, Captain. Let's go. Nodding, Yuki smiled, his plans were on track. After about 15 minutes, they arrived at the secret umbu hunter's base. Entering the base, Yuki decided to check his uniform first. He looked at various masks on the wall. If he were a regular umbu hunter, they would just assign him a mask, but he wanted to choose. One mask caught his attention, with two colors, white and black, and a smiling face. It reminded him of theater masks from his previous world. Feeling a clear attachment to his past world, Yuki decided this would be his mask. Removing his eye patch, Yuki equipped his mask. No more games. With a mental command, Yuki activated his Sherry Nan. The intense crimson eye and the golden eye were an unusual combination. After equipping the standard gear, Yuki also wore a black hood. Although the Umbu gear was cool, Yuki preferred his astral suit. However, he didn't wear it since being constantly in it consumed his chakra. Captain, according to our rules, I should hand you this cloak. Kneeling on one knee, the boar masked hunter had already removed his white cloak and was now in his standard hunter attire. No need. I love black. We'll change the rules a bit. Besides me, no one is authorized to wear a hood. Yes, as you command, Captain. Although somewhat stern, the hunter didn't refute his words. There was nothing he could do, these were orders from the hookage, after all. Let's go. Yes, Captain. Inside the base, many hunters had gathered. They had received notice to assemble, and the rumor of a new captain spread among them. Is it true there's a new captain? It's just a rumor, it can't be true. Then why did they call us all? Maybe just new recruits. That has never happened before. While some murmured, some already knew the rumors were true, like Kakashi, who wore bandages around his shoulder, badly wounded but couldn't miss this. He still vividly remembered what happened yesterday, knowing that the child assuming the captaincy was terrifying. Do you know anything a curious female hunter with long purple hair and a cat mask with three red stripes on her right shoulder asked? Who knows shrugging, Kakashi responded dismissively. She couldn't help but suspect her companion more, but when she wanted to continue her questions, the new captain arrived. Hello, everyone. I think you've already heard the rumors, but there will be a change of captain. So, I present to you our new Umbu captain. Making way for the boar masked hunter to enter, Yuki raised his eyebrows at this, not caring much about the former captain's behavior. Hello and welcome to the pit. From now on, Umbu is mine, so starting today, we'll make several changes to this organization. 
This organization will be governed by three simple rules. Raising his fingers, Yuki looked at all the Umbu hunters. Confusion filled the room at such a bold speech. They looked at the small figure and were surprised that their new captain was a member of the Uchiha clan. However, they also felt curious about his left eye with its intense golden color. First, anyone who betrays me, I'll make sure to devour them along with their family. Second, only I and no one else can give you orders. Third, the protection of Kanaha is our top priority. So, from now on, any Umbu protecting Kanaha's politicians is relieved of their duties and must report to the base. Silence covered the base before exploding, no one knew what was happening except for a few. What does the captain mean what about the Hokage? The Hokage is not authorized to order you. I said it clearly, Umbu is mine, there's no need to protect the Hokage either. After all, if the old man dies, we can always choose another one. The Umbu hunter was speechless at this, many of them were dissatisfied. What's this about devouring us Umbu is yours I didn't join the Umbu hunters to listen to the delusions of a child. Yuki's physique was small, something clothes and gear couldn't conceal, that's why he identified instantly that he was just a child. Yuki smiled at the troublemakers in the crowd. Oh I almost forgot, but today we'll do some cleaning. I don't want rats wandering in my organization. Elohim. Tick. Tock. With the thought, Yuki instantly entered his astral suit. Darkness covered them, and his equipment changed. The Umbu hunters were stunned by this. All right, let's start the cleanup. Zafkil. Tokihami no Shiro. With weapons in hand, a huge ancient clock appeared on his back, and darkness spread, covering the entire base. Aleph. Bang. Aiming the spark gun at his head, Yuki pulled the trigger. Yud Aleph. Reappearing behind the Umbu hunter who had protested, Yuki showed no mercy and pulled the trigger. Aagr. Blood flowed as he was devoured, the crowd quickly distanced themselves, surprised by this turn of events. Already. I see. You. You're the devourer. With a panicked look, several Umbu hunters gripped their weapons. This is concerning. If you attack me, I'll consider it betrayal, and I won't show mercy. As I said, we're just doing some cleaning, hi hi hi. Many Umbu hunters were paralyzed by his words, quickly turning their heads to look at their former captain, who, upon seeing them, just shook his head. He clenched his fists, but did not interfere with the new captain. This left many of them in doubt. Now then, let's continue. Aleph. Bang. This was a day that would be etched in the minds of every Umbu hunter. It was a day of massacre. Chapter 29, Would You Like to Be Hokage Bam? What does this mean, Hiruzen with a slam on the table, Danzo stared at Hiruzen. He had received information from the new Umbu captain that all his spies had been eliminated. This infuriated him. What do you mean, Danzo? With a puff of his pipe, Hiruzen looked at his good friend. He knew Danzo wouldn't stand idly by. You know what I mean. You gave away control of Umbu. Do you realize what this means we could be attacked at any moment? You're wrong, Danzo. Umbu still serves Kanaha, I just appointed someone else to handle it. Don't lie to me. I know that Uchiha kid bribed you. I heard a massacre started on the first day. Are you insane, Hiruzen? Hiruzen sighed towards his friend. He was in a tight spot, having heard about it as well, but there was nothing he could do. He had received numerous complaints since Umbu stopped protecting Kanaha's politicians, and the whole village erupted with dissatisfaction over the new captain. Those were spies. According to their report, they had been leaking crucial information from Kanaha. That's impossible. Hiruzen, you better understand the sin you've committed. With an intense look, Danzo left his office. In truth, he felt cornered. With his spies dead, he was blind when it came to Umbu. Yuki Uchiha. With a determined look, Danzo devised a plan. Hiruzen, you asked for this. The position of Hokage had belonged to him for a long time, it was time to relinquish it. He had to be a bit thankful to the kid since it gave him a good reason to convene a meeting and force Hiruzen to step down. With these thoughts, Danzo decided he had to move quickly. Dash. Here's the report, 
Captain. Good. Seated in his office, Yuki examined various intelligence documents. He was 12 years old now, soon turning 13. A year had passed since he took full control of Umbu. Though it was challenging at the beginning, he ensured all members were loyal to him, which wasn't that difficult. Many had tried to kill or poison him, but all attempts ended in failure, and the would-be assassins were, of course, devoured. After witnessing their grim fate, the Umbu hunters decided to behave. As captain, he had complete control over Kanaha's security and mission assignments, much like a hookage but on the dark side. And, of course, he did his job. He made sure not a fly entered Kanaha without his permission, and he also caused plenty of trouble for a certain organization, Root. Thanks for the report. Yes. Yuki looked at the woman with long purple hair. A year ago, he had made her his secretary. Yuki thought it would be better to have a woman serving him than a man. However, he had to admit that this woman had been very loyal. Her name was Yojo Ozuki. He had thoroughly investigated her and discovered many interesting things. Despite being hidden behind her umbu gear, she had a pretty face and a good body. From what I see, the new candidates for Hokage will enter the vote soon. That's correct, Captain. But I have to say, Tsunade Sama is leading. Of course, she is. She's amazing, after all. Looking at the voting statistics, Yuki couldn't help but recall Tsunade's pleasant face from a month ago. A month ago, while Yuki was having his weekly break in Tsunade's bosom. Big sister Tsunade. Yes, little Yuki. Rubbing his face in the enormous sacred valley, Yuki felt like he had entered Nirvana for a moment. Smells good. Enjoying her rich aroma, Yuki was tempted to kiss those huge mountains, but he knew it would be his end if he did. His relationship with Tsunade hadn't progressed much since then, she still treated him as her younger brother, although she was more aware of him as a man. But it couldn't be helped, after all, he was still 12 years old. However, Yuki was confident that in a couple more years, he would put this woman in her place. Would you like to be Hokage? An awkward silence filled the room. Well, little Yuki, you have a good sense of humor, ha ha ha. After locking eyes for a moment, Tsunade couldn't contain her laughter, she thought the boy was joking. But big sister Tsunade, you're perfect for the position. Ha ha, come on, little Yuki, these jokes are too funny. But I'm not joking. People would support you. Ha ha ha. After several minutes, Tsunade had a bad feeling. Little Yuki, don't joke like that. You know someone like me wouldn't be suitable for the position. Besides, being Hokage would be too troublesome. No, that's definitely not for me. Shaking her head, Tsunade took a bottle of sake and decided to forget everything in alcohol. But big sister Tsunade, you're the favorite. If things continue like this, you'll be the fifth Hokage. Slipping his hand into his clothes, Yuki showed her the results of the votes. Splash. Seeing it, Tsunade couldn't help but spit out all the sake. What does this mean, Brad why is my name on this list several veins bulged on Tsunade's forehead, she looked at Yuki, who was still between her breasts. Yuki quickly averted his gaze while whistling. Whistle. Brad, what have you done Tsunade quickly found the culprit, she hugged Yuki tightly. Hum big dot sister. I can't. Breathe. Speak, brat. Don't think I'll forgive you. Hmm. Yuki was on the borderline between heaven and hell in Tsunade's bosom. After several compliments and useless comments, he convinced Tsunade, and, of course, he dragged Shizun into it too. Dash. While remembering Tsunade and Shizun's faces, a smile formed on his face. He he he. Captain tilting her head, Yojo looked at him with doubts. It's nothing, don't worry. Waving his hand, Yuki pondered his next move. Everything was going as planned. By having control of Umbu, he blinded Danzo across Kanaha. He also cornered him, forcing him to convene a meeting for the selection of a new Hokage. With no Umbu protecting Kanaha's politicians, he was sure they would support Danzo in pressuring Hiruzen to step down, as they were dissatisfied with the third Hokage. Without eyes, arms, and legs and forced into a tight spot, Danzo's only way out is to be elected as Hokage. Something that will never happen. 
he was waiting for this and had the perfect candidate for the position. With popularity and fame on Tsunade's side, it's impossible for her not to be chosen. Without the shield that was the third Hokage, Danzo would be like a fish on the chopping block. However, those votes need to be secured. Thinking about some individuals, Yuki decided to pay them a visit. His body flickered, leaving a clone in his office while he made his visit. Chapter 30, who said having a harem was easy residence Hayagat, Kanaha. Hayashi enjoyed his tea while eating a fruitcake, however, a small vein appeared on his forehead. Yuki and I, I. Hanabi, you grow more beautiful every day. He he he. With hands on her cheeks, Hanabi's face had a slight blush. Yuki. Of course, you're also more beautiful, Hinata. Turning his head, Yuki looked at Hinata with a special gaze, as he loved her eyes. Caressing her cheeks, Yuki leaned in, and Hinata's cheeks warmed as his face approached. Yuki. Hinata. Unknowingly, they entered their little world, and Yuki tried to steal a kiss from Hinata, but... Cough, cough. Hayashi couldn't watch this any longer, he felt hurt every time the brat came to his house. He thought his daughters would gradually distance themselves from the boy over time. How wrong he was, his daughters did the opposite. Especially his eldest daughter. As a father, he couldn't tolerate this, but he was also surprised at how quickly their relationship developed. Hayashi was helpless, looking at the kids in front of him, wondering who the boy would marry. Hayashi had already given up and started to accept the brat as his son-in-law. He thought it couldn't be helped and that he would visit Princess Tsunade later, he just hoped the boy wouldn't deceive his daughter. How wrong he was, the brat had a few unknown adventures even to them. Well, what have you come for, Yuki? Father. While his daughters pouted, Yuki just scratched his head. Another time, Yuki told himself, thinking about the future kiss with Hinata. Haha, sorry for that, Mr. Hayashi. I came to talk about the Hokage election. Hum with a tired sigh, Hayashi looked at Yuki, the boy had been bothering him about this for months, supporting Princess Tsunade wasn't a bad idea, not to mention she was leading in the elections, but... I think I told you, we'll remain neutral. That's true, Mr. Hayashi but think about it a bit. I believe it would be beneficial for the Hayaga clan not to miss this opportunity. Still shaking his head, Hayashi didn't accept the boy's proposal. He wasn't foolish, he could see many thorns involved in these elections, and he didn't want his clan to suffer. It can't be helped, then. This is for you, Mr. Hayashi. Taking a small envelope from his clothes, Yuki handed it to Hayashi. Hayashi raised his eyebrows a bit at this, not thinking much before opening it, after all, he trusted the boy. Is this? Opening his eyes in shock, Hayashi exchanged glances between the document and Yuki. Father is something wrong. Father. Leave, I need to talk to Yuki. Giving a serious look, Hayashi ordered his daughters, both were confused about what was happening, looking at Yuki, expecting an explanation. Yuki felt their stares but just smiled at them and winked. I'll see you later was what his look told them. Um. Nodding, both left the room. Is this true, Yuki Hayashi said with a serious look, I wouldn't dare to lie to you, Mr. Hayashi. Now tell me, I think it's wise for you to support my older sister. Looking into each other's eyes for a few seconds, Hayashi sighed. Fine, Princess Tsunade has our full support. It's a wise choice, Mr. Hayashi, you won't regret it. Well, that's all for today. See you later, Mr. Hayashi. Um, take care. Thank you. Watching Yuki's back, Hayashi turned his gaze to the document, it contained several pieces of evidence where Danzo was responsible for his daughter's kidnapping years ago, a dangerous gleam passed through his eyes. Dash dash. On the other hand, Yuki had investigated this case a few years ago, there were several mysteries surrounding it, but he decided to blame Danso entirely. For that, he gathered various pieces of evidence. Yuki was sure that Hayashi would believe him if he showed proof, their trust was built over the years, after all. Another clan in the bag. Now, Danzo, what else do you have? Yuki and I. I. Yuki. Looking at the sisters, Yuki smiled. Yuki and I. I. 
will you stay for dinner? Sorry, I can't today. Shaking her head, Yuki replied, he had other clans to visit. Um. Pouting, Hanabi looked resentfully at Yuki. Come on, it'll be next time, Hanabi. But. Enough, I'll make it up to you later, okay? Fine. Making a displeased face, Hanabi let him go. Yuki. This is for you. Contrary to Hanabi, Hinata had a lunchbox in her hand, her face was flushed, and she avoided Yuki's gaze. Thanks, Hinata. A bit surprised, Yuki took the lunchbox, but as he did, he also held Hinata's hand. Hinata's body trembled because of that. You'll be a great wife, Hinata. Moving closer slowly, Yuki touched Hinata's cheeks, steam came out of Hinata's head because of it. It's not fair. I want Yuki and I, I to pamper me too. Hanabi threw a tantrum, seeing them flirt in front of her, Yuki just sighed at that. Who said having a harem was easy he had to make his future wives fall in love with him every day, understand and please them. But that was okay, after all, Yuki liked problems, and a woman meant problems. Dash dash. It was late when Yuki arrived at the Yamanaka clan, this was a clan known for their ability to control minds, something Yuki found very useful. Entering the flower shop, Yuki looked at a small silhouette. Yuki, you came. How do I look? Striking a pose with a hand on her waist, a girl with blonde hair and green eyes looked at Yuki. You look very pretty, Ino. Yuki was a bit speechless because of this girl, always finding ways to look more beautiful. It made him sigh, but he didn't hate it. In fact, he encouraged it. He thought it would be interesting to see what beauty she would become in the future. Yuki with a blush on her face, Ino hugged one of his arms, unlike the Hayaga sisters, Ino wasn't shy about showing her feelings. Yuki liked her personality a lot, that's why he pursued her without hesitation, or rather, it could be said that both parties pursued each other. Tell me, Yuki, are you in love with me with a bright smile, Ino asked. Yuki didn't know what to say, for a moment, he was tempted to answer with a yes. But a brief memory flashed in his head.